Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Monday, the 31st of July, 2023. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, just briefly helping my son to get his first new car. Just wanted to go to the dealer with him and just make sure everything ran smooth. You know how that can be. And everything did run smooth. So finally, and it always takes a while, doesn't it? Here I am. So uh, let's talk about the tropics. Let's see what's going on out there. The headline of So Far So Good, I think that's an appropriate headline. We've made it two months into the hurricane season already, and we've had, we have not had any major problems, especially considering all the hoopla around the warm ter- surface temperatures, sea surface temperatures, the historic nature to it. I have certainly been beating that drum. And all that being said, yes, so far so good. So let's just recap where we have been. We have had tropical storms, Arlene, Brett and Cindy, and we've had one hurricane, that was Don, and uh, Don, of course, became a hurricane up in the subtropics, meaning that it was out of the deep tropics, north of about 20 degrees latitude, and uh, that's where it formed, up in the subtropics. And in the eastern Pacific, more hurricanes, but less total named storms, kind of flip-flopped, if you will. Three hurricanes there, Adrian, Beatrice, and Calvin, and we have Tropical Depression 4E out there that didn't really amount to much. So there you have it. Again, not too shabby overall. No big impacts yet, but we still have to get through the next 90 days. August, September, October, typically the biggest months. The big question, especially for people that really track this stuff closely, will all of this very warm water, especially compared to the averages, matter? Is it going to help out and give us an extraordinarily busy time ahead? Am I going to start getting big bags under my eyes and the hair all messy where I look like I'm worn down because we're tracking one hurricane after another? Or are these updates going to just be so far so good, part two, part three, and so forth and so on? Stay tuned. We're going to have to all find out together. As I have said many, many times, I think logic would dictate that if you just follow the evidence, we should have a very busy uptick in activity, especially in about three weeks when the climatological lid, so to speak, gets pulled off, and we would normally expect to see an uptick in activity. We shall see. So let's just talk about what we have out there now instead of speculating too much about the future. That's not always helpful. Sometimes we can do it, and even if it's often, but not all the time. I think that's a good way to approach it. So what do we got out there? Well, here's 96L. It has become sort of a disheveled mess out there, and so has 97L, which is up here. Remember, this kind of Hung out over here, made landfall, if you will, as a week low. I mean, that's what it was. And it's meandered around, and now it's sitting up here. I don't think that either of these are going to develop, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, on the one hand, you could say, hmm, we're not even getting subtropical development. Maybe something's wrong. On the other hand, not having very prolific development in the subtropics, and that's all we're getting, might indicate that maybe eventually the area where we expect it to happen down here will eventually come to life. You're just speculating a little bit there. And again, what I'm saying, we're not seeing development could either be a symptom that something's wrong, or since we're not seeing development in the subtropics, it shows that maybe the deep tropics, the area that I've circled or outlined, as it were, in the rectangle, will eventually become more favorable and sort of rule everything. I don't know. It's just hard to to know for sure different reasons why we're not getting development right now. And the deep tropics is mainly because of the abundance of dry air, again, owed to the fact that we are still, even though it's the last day of July, it is still July. But clearly, you can see, not a lot happening out there overall to worry about uh, anywhere. This system in the eastern Pacific we'll keep an eye on. It uh, crossed over from the Atlantic from a tropical wave that was once 95L, remember that? Yeah, it'll try to develop some in the East Pack, and we'll watch that as it traverses off to the west and west-northwest with time. Meanwhile, our vorticity signature, which really helps us to see how things are bundling up. Here's 97L, so I'll try to draw a 97 on it. Here's 96 over here. Both of them have decent vorticity signatures down at the 5,000-foot level, but not a lot of overall organization, not a lot of deep thunderstorms, So they're not strengthening, and certainly 97L up here is becoming part of a frontal system, if it hasn't already. 
So this is almost certainly not going to develop. And this one started to get stretched out as well. It's just not a very favorable time. You could almost infer that there might be some kind of a tut right in here, a tropical upper tropospheric trough. I'm just speculating by looking at what's happening here. That would just be, I don't know, maybe we can look at the 200 millibar and see if I'm right about that. Uh, but, you know, not everything has to develop, even though it gets up to 80%, which is where 96L was at one point. And look over here, even in the East Pack, our system there, kind of oblong shape, kind of looks like a, a galaxy, like if you see a picture of a galaxy from astronomy, right? It's kind of got those arms on it, like a squished spiral galaxy. It's just not rounded and rapidly intensifying or anything like that. So globally, no major one strong cyclone after another. So eventually, one of the basins should take over and one would think that it would be the Atlantic because that's where the majority of the warm water is relative to average. See, I can kind of prove it to you. All of the North Atlantic Basin here, north of the equator, is warmer than average. You can basically almost call it 100%. The areas in the Eastern Pacific, or the Pacific as a whole, the Tropical Pacific that are warmer, are much smaller compared to the rest of said basin. You understand? This is the totality. These are just little chunks over here. And this is pretty far north. It's not all down over here in the deep tropics. So I just think that eventually, we'll put a check mark here, the Atlantic Basin will take over. The warm water relative to average is where it usually is when we see a very busy season. It's just that we're at the end of July here. Check back in about a month, and we could see some very, very busy maps. We could. It's not a guarantee. But one would certainly think that it would be the case. Uh, ending the month, looking at some actual temperatures. If you're curious how they are going, the 80 degree line, which is about 26 Celsius, there's 28, 27, so this is 26, or about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius. It's actually 79 and a half or something like that. So that's where it is. Getting a little closer up here to our friends in southern New England and elsewhere. Still a little too cold for me. I like it about 82, 83, not that 86 to 90 that you can get in southwest Florida for what it's worth. And then, of course, along the southeast coast over here, water temperatures nice and warm off the Outer Banks. We're talking mid to upper 80s overall. Luckily, no tropical systems to come along and take advantage of these water temperatures anytime soon. In fact, we're going to get a nice little, little small hint of fall weather coming up from the northeast as a trough comes in with cooler temperatures, lower dew points, drier air, and a much more pleasant overall atmosphere. In the meantime, the Gulf of Mexico, yes, this is concerning. These are your 31 Celsius isotherms right here. That's very, very warm. We're talking upper 80s to near 90. There's 32 Celsius surrounding central, I mean, it's basically all of the Louisiana coast. You've seen this enough, don't want to keep harping on it, but it is remarkable to look at and just go, wow, that is very, very warm. Not only is it warm in reality, but it is warmer than the long-term average. If we scooch in and just take a look at the Gulf, most of the Gulf of Mexico, if not all of it now, running above the long-term average. So it's hot, and it's hotter than it should be. It is literally hot out there in the Gulf. All right, so looking at the East Pack with what was once 95L, this is our moisture area, 300 to 700 millibars of the atmosphere. So if you just took a, a layer of the atmosphere, in this case, it's from 300 millibars, which is actually up here, down to 700 millibars. It's just a like a layer cake, seriously. It's just a certain layer of the atmosphere. And in this case, it's the layer that really matters for tropical cyclone development. you got to have that part of the atmosphere pretty moist, north of about 50, 60, 70 percent humidity. It's kind of subjective. It's not a really hard number. But on the map that Dr. Cowan, Levi Cowan, has created here, this makes it easy to visualize, you basically don't want to see brown if you're looking for tropical cyclone development. That is negative for tropical cyclone development. The green and the darker shades of green indicate your higher humidity values, as you can see on the map legend over here, right? So that being said, what do we got out there? 
Well, this is what was once 95L. It's now in the Eastern Pacific. And uh, you know what? Let me just cheat for a second and jump up here to the current storms. I'm sure it has an invest number by now. And it is. It's 96E. I just had to make sure. All right. That's fair. I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about with you. All right. 96E. So watch it right here as it moves. And we, as we move, I move the uh, slider. It really doesn't do much. You see that? It just kind of sits there, doesn't do much, goes on out westward. And then another one tries to form. But the point is, look at all of this moisture through here. Deep green, that's lots of humidity, 80, 85, 90% humidity in the part of the atmosphere where it really matters. you got to have that moist mid-level of the atmosphere to help get things going. So this next feature does try to ramp up fairly close to Mexico, and it gets going after about day six or so, finally getting out to the open Pacific, and it should eventually die away as it reaches cooler water. But the main thing is, boy, oh boy, look at all of that rich, moist, mid-level air. Then contrast that to the <coughs> dry Atlantic, right? Seriously, you got your high pressure up here and then very dry air off of Africa, nosing its way down into the deep tropics here. Yeah, that's not conducive to development at all. It really isn't. It doesn't help. you got to have higher humidity than that. And, and as we move this out into time, you have narrow bands, and it is pretty narrow down here of your moisture areas, but a lot of dry air to the north, and that helps to put the kibosh on anything trying to develop. So your upper level winds could be very favorable. Your water temperatures could be nice and warm. But boy, oh boy, when you see all of that brown, the Saharan air layer doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's full of dust. But that's just dry mid-level air. That's not going to do it. And this is out basically a week from now. Let's just make it official at 168, August 7th. Now look, that's still about two weeks ahead of when sort of the sal lets off the gas pedal a little bit. You know what I mean? Like two weeks makes a difference. Climatology is so important. The air pressure changes over the Atlantic. The big areas of high pressure kind of migrate to the north, and you get more of a moist plume coming off of Africa naturally. And then you throw in these intraseasonal variations like the convectively coupled Kelvin waves, these brief periods where more moist air comes across, less wind shear, more convergence, that kind of thing. And we really can't see those this far out into time. You kind of notice once they are already happening. So this is a week out, first week of August has come and gone by this time, and not much out there at that time frame. After that, well, we'll have to just wait and see, right? All right, a couple of things to end on a little bit better news for you overall. Notice all of the oranges and that pinkish color. Unfortunately for our friends in the deep south here, eastern Texas, all of Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and elsewhere, even Kansas. I hope our friend Matt up here near Wichita is doing okay. Pretty toasty, huh, Matt? Um, yeah, that's your excessive heat warnings and your heat advisory areas. Why? Because the big old high that was sitting out here, big old heat dome, we'll just kind of draw it in for fun, that has shifted this way. So the big old high pressure area is sitting something like this, and that sinking air acts to compress, heat up, dry out. I say dry out, you still have some pretty high humidity at the surface. But yeah, it's very sultry farther to the east. And as a result, the flow around that is allowing more moisture into the desert southwest for today and tomorrow. And that even comes up into parts of the Rockies too, the monsoonal flow, and you're getting a few more areas of showers and thunderstorms. But it's going to be fairly short-lived, this reprieve from the heat. We will see these pinks and oranges expand back over the desert southwest again as we get into August. But for today, in fact, let's just check real quick. I think Phoenix will finally end their streak of 110 plus uh, today. And let's just click on Phoenix over here. I was just there. What an amazing area. 100s. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way they're going to make it to 110 today. But by Friday, the 110 plus are back maybe even as early as Thursday. But look, 
these um, percentages here, 30%, 60 tonight, 40 tomorrow, you know, you'll take it. I'm sure you'll take it. You need some rainfall out there. But with that, of course, comes the chance of what we call dry lightning. You get the lightning, very little rain, and you get some brush fires and forest fires, and that's not pleasant at all. Real quick, that is moisture. This is from our cam, from our good friend Jeremy over in Sierra Vista, just like it says right there. This is one of our permanent Nest cameras that we have, kind of a micro, micro, micro version of uh, EarthCam, if you will. We have about a dozen of these that uh, very gracious people around the Western Hemisphere host for us in our Hurricane Track Insider and Patreon crowd uh, can access these over on our interactive map and our digital dashboard. But that's moisture. That's a good thing to see uh, because later on today that should bubble up and get some shower and thunderstorm activity going for portions of Arizona. Again, I love it out there. I was on Fox Weather a little bit a while ago. If that's a word, a little bit a while ago. Uh, yeah, I was. I was talking about it uh, with Ian Oliver and company over at Fox Weather, the desert southwest. I think other than tracking hurricanes, there's something about the southwest monsoon that's just right there. It's just really fascinating. I think a lot of it has to do with how water really shapes the landscape, and I think that makes sense, too, with hurricanes that storm surge, because that's really been my specialty, is studying, documenting, and then talking about storm surge as a major impact. The force of water on the planet Earth is something else, all right? But for now, good way to get out of this and put it online for you. So far, so good. We haven't had any major calamities to deal with, but hey, we still have a few months to go. If we can end that way, that would be great. But we don't know one way or the other. So you're going to have to just stay tuned, all right? You've got to come back and pay me a visit. And as always, I do appreciate that. All right, let's get this done and wrapped up and online for you. As always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with you, if not tomorrow, then certainly on Wednesday.